Hello everyone, welcome to my channel The Tooth Fairy and our today's topic is Taurodontism. So if we look at this figure, A is normal teeth and B is Taurodontism. So we can easily spot the differences here. The pulp width is more. The furcation area shifted apically towards the apex. Um, the root length and the crown are relatively same in both A and B. But the individual root height is less in the figure B. So the root furcation moves apically leaving the individual roots greatly shortened even though the overall root length may be normal. So clinically we cannot judge whether it's a taurodontism or not so we see it radiographically. So in this x-ray we can see that the furcation areas lies near to the apex. It's a case of hypertaurodontism and tooth looks more like rectangular. The word taurodontism originates from the Latin word taurus which means bull and a Greek word odontos which means tooth. So bull tooth. Okay. Because these cut chewing animals or these ruminants have same type of tooth okay basically cut chewing means that they eat food and store in stomach and then they bring this food back to the mouth and chew it again so the bulls goat sheep all have this mechanism of eating food so the body of the tooth enlarged at the expense of root and the pulp chamber is now elongated and extends deeply into the region of the roots okay and uh, the permanent molars are most often affected so, taurodontism may occur in permanent or primary dentition. It is present in molars and less often in premolars. Single or multiple teeth can be affected or all the molars in the same quadrant and the condition can be unilateral or bilateral. Bilateral is more common. Now, you are going to see this bull in all slides just to remind you that we are talking about bull teeth. Taurodontism is bull teeth. Now, the teeth themselves have no remarkable or unusual morphologic clinical characteristics. So, we view it radiographically as I told you. Now, causes of taurodontism according to Manjon is a specialized or retrograde character because it used to happen in old times when in case of Neanderthals. So, it's a primitive pattern also a Mendelian recessive trait. An atavistic fa uh, feature is just like vestigial tail. Some humans are born with vestigial tail at the end of spine. So that is atavism. Also a mutation resulting from odontoplastic deficiency during dentinogenesis of the root. So odontoplastic deficiency, odontoplast forms dentine. So there may be some deficiency of odontoplastic cells that led to this taurodontism. Also, there are there is one other cause mentioned by Hemmer. So, according to him, the Hartwig epithelial sheath, which you know guides the root formation, it invaginates at the improper horizontal level. So, there is one this other reason. Now, there is a classification by Shaw, which is based on the extent of pulp chamber elongation. Mild is hypotaurodontism and the, just the pulp chamber is enlarged. Moderate is mesotaurodontism. The roots are divided only at the middle third. And severe is bifurcation, trivergation lies next to the root apices. So it looks rectangular. And a cyanodont is normal tooth. So this was the classification given by Shaw in 1928 based on the apical migration of the percation area. Next classification is Schiffman and Shunanel classification given in 1978, almost 50 years. So this measurement includes two variables. The first variable you can see here is from the lowest point of the roof and the highest point of the floor so this is variable one and this is the variable two from the lowest point of the roof of the pulp chamber and the apex of the longest root so this is two so 
the one is one will migrate you know one will migrate with taurodontism so the taurodont index is variable one by variable two the more it will migrate the more will be the taurodontism the more severe will be the taurodontism so variable one by variable two into 100 okay multiplied by 100 so if the value lies between 20 to 30 it is hypotaurodontism if it's 30 to 40 it is mesotaurodontism and it, if it is 40 to 70 it is hypertaurodontism it all changes with the change in variable one so now uh, it may be associated with many conditions such as down syndrome that is trisomy of chromosome 21 Trico dento osseous syndrome. Trico is hair, dento is um, teeth, and osseous is bone. So it affects all of these. And ectodermal dysplasia, in which uh, all of the things like uh, all of the organs, teeth, hair, nails, they all are affected, which are derived from the ectoderm. And in case of amelogenesis imperfecta, that we will study next. So, taurodontism actually may provide a valuable clue in detecting its association with this syndrome so you a dentist can actually be the first person to you know to detect these syndromes in a person so if we now look at the clinical overview uh, the endodontic therapy that that is the root canal treatment becomes a challenge as instrumentation and obturation is tough also for prosthodontic treatment now because less surface area of tooth is embedded in the socket surface area come ho gaya hai because the furcation area shifted apically so not much stability as compared to a normal or sand on teeth so it shouldn't be used for prostho and ortho purposes as an abutment tooth it shouldn't be recommended for a post placement okay also the extraction of such teeth may not be a problem because uh, you know now the surface area of tooth embedded in socket is less so utni stability nahi hai to extraction is comparatively easy just the roots shouldn't be divergent okay agar roots divergent hoengi then it will be difficult from a periodontal standpoint isme fayda ho jata hai because the chances of furcation involvement are less than those in normal teeth because furcation area shifted apically to or periodontal destruction ho, hoga ek bari tabhi furcation involvement hogi okay thank you everyone for watching this video i hope you found it useful please like share and subscribe to my channel if you like the video